Welcome to Pod Nuts Daily. This is the second episode being recorded on March 5th, 2008. First, I just want to apologize quickly about the sound quality. If you hear me breathing a little too heavily, I just haven't uh, gotten the positioning of the mic down quite yet, but I'll have that nailed down for our next podcast. Let's not waste any time and just jump right into it here. First thing I want to talk about is a lesson I learned today. Now, I have a computer repair business, if you don't know that already, and I often repair laptops and laptop screens. Well, a customer brought in a MacBook today. Uh, actually, the story starts a little bit before that. Call, he called me yesterday, or it might have been the day before, said he has a MacBook and his screen is broken. Uh, his daughter accidentally hit it and it, it fell and broke. Now, he was in a rush for the computer, so he needed a screen right away. Now, I don't stock MacBook screens, so for the sake of saving him money, because he seemed like he was pretty with it, uh, I told him to buy a screen on eBay, look for a reputable seller, and then depending on if he wants new or used, look for a screen. You could get it for a good price, usually on eBay, and get it delivered. And once he has it delivered, I could install the screen, and I charge him my rate for installing the screen. So he was um, okay with that, and he actually went ahead and got the screen overnighted. He ordered a screen and got it overnighted to him. So I took it. He was in kind of a rush, and he brought the screen into me. Now, installing screens is a pretty easy thing for me. I've done it a bunch of times, and I actually never did a MacBook. Okay, so I took the screen he brought in, opened it up. It looked like it was in good shape, and so I put it to the side and went ahead and started taking his old screen out of his computer. Uh, I own a MacBook myself, and I've taken the bezel off the front of the screen, but never actually replaced the screen. So I, I, I knew what was inside there and considered it was going to be an easy job. So um, I went ahead and did it, took the front cover off of the screen, and then started unscrewing his screen from the actual frame. Got his old screen out. Now, the one wire that wasn't easily accessible is the wire that goes to the power inverter. The inverter board sits under the screen and actually just powers um, the light bulb that lights the screen. Well, the inverter sits under a part on the MacBook that is, is held in by three screws. Now, I took the three screws out, and I couldn't get the, that part off, which houses the inverter. So I went online, and I went and searched and tried to find um, somebody who has replaced a MacBook screen, like a step-by-step -step tutorial, just to make sure I wasn't doing anything wrong. And I found somebody who did do it, and he posted a tutorial up online. And when he did it, he actually, to get to the inverter board, he had actually took most of the computer apart the keyboard off, the case opened up, the battery out, the hard drive out. And my customer, I think, saw the same posting because he was going to, my customer was going to try to attempt to do it himself as well. But after he saw how complicated it was, he said he wasn't going to do it and brought it to me. Well, after I saw that, I considered that um, it would take too long and I would have to charge a comp the customer too much money to go ahead and take the whole computer off just to get to the inverter board. So what I did was I took his old screen, which was connected to the inverter, cut the wires going to the inverter, took the new screen, put it in the computer, and soldered the two wires that go from the new screen to the two wires that were going to the inverter from the old screen. Now, to do that, I had to snip off the little plug that goes to the inverter board from the screen. I grudgingly did this because it was a brand-new screen and I didn't want to um, do anything that was not standard. But I know that those two wires, their only purpose is to power the bulb that, that, powers, that lights the screen. So I went ahead and did it for the sake of speed. And there's nothing wrong with doing a nice soldering job. It's going to hold probably longer than the life of the screen. So I did a nice soldering job, put everything back together, and installed the screen. I didn't have to take the inverter out. Felt really proud that I bypassed that whole um, um, mess of work I would have to do. And then we powered his computer on. And what we saw was the screen was actually damaged, and there was lines shooting across the screen horizontally that um, is would show damage that the signs that the screen was damaged. Now here's a lesson I learned. I cut the wires off a brand new screen thinking that the new screen would be defect-free and everything would go smooth. Well, what happened was the screen was actually defective.
And now the customer couldn't return it because it was considered damaged because I cut those wires. So, lesson learned. If you have to do something the hard way, go ahead and do it the hard way because it's going to pay off in the future. It's going to save yourself a lot of headaches too. Incidentally, I later found out that you don't have to take the whole computer apart to get to the inverter board on a MacBook. So that made me feel real good too. Now we have a special treat here in this episode of Podnuts Daily. You guys know Mike Petro from episode two and episode four of Podnuts. You can see that or hear that at podnuts.com. Um, he has some information to impart to you, and I'm going to play that in a little bit. He made a recording for me to put on this podcast. Uh, but before that, I just want to end off on a funny note for me personally because my day was crazy today, but there was one funny thing that happened. Um, a customer came in, brought me his computer, said he thinks there was something wrong with his USB port because his keyboard wasn't working. Every other device he had did work on USB, but his USB keyboard wasn't working. So I powered his computer on, and I went into the device manager, and I saw that a driver for his keyboard was um, sh flashing with the yellow exclamation mark, meaning something was wrong with the drivers that were being loaded or the drivers that were existing. So I went ahead and reinstalled the drivers for the keyboard that it was looking for. And it went smooth. It actually existed on his hard drive. The device manager found the drivers, installed them, and then the yellow exclamation mark went away. So I tried my USB keyboard again. It worked fine. The mouse worked fine. Everything worked fine. But I've had an experience before where my keyboard and mice work fine on the computer, and then the customer brings it home, and his keyboard doesn't work. So I called him up, and I told him to bring his keyboard into me. And he wasn't home, but he said he would ask his wife to do it. And I said to him, you know, just tell your wife to bring in everything that is um, that came with the keyboard. If the keyboard came with the mouse, bring that in too. So he's like, all right, she'll bring it up in a little bit. So she comes in about 20 minutes later with a keyboard, a mouse, a Netgear wireless router, and a Western Digital Passport external hard drive. Oh, and by the way, there was no wireless receiver for the keyboard and the mouse. And I, I looked at her and I said, you know, I need I do two of these things. I can use the two other ones. No, that, that wasn't the right thing. So I gave her back the router and the hard drive, and she went home and got the wireless receiver for the keyboard and mouse. Anyway, I thought that was kind of cute that the devices she brought in were ridiculously unrelated to the keyboard. Only a geek would laugh at that, but I thought that was funny. Okay. Let's listen to Mike. He's got a computer he worked on. It gave him a bit of trouble, and he figured it out. He's going to tell you exactly the situation and what happened with the whole deal. Here's Mike. Hey, guys. It's Mike Petro. You've heard me on Episodes 2 and 4 of Podnuts with Steve Cherubino. We're both computer repair people. I thought maybe I could chime in and share an experience, and who knows? Maybe he'll use this as his second edition.